Hey guys, Tyler here, back once again, another video, this time talking about E3 and Ubisoft's pre press conference. I'm already lost for words right now, it's pretty early, I got up early to watch this press conference. And overall, super solid, and I want to recap that, talk about some of the games and things like that that were at the press conference, and if you missed it, give you guys a bit of a highlight on what you may have missed, and you can go after this and check that out. First of all, leave a like on this video. And subscribe to my channel if you're new. So let's get right into E3's Ubisoft press conference 2016. First of all, obviously, Aisha Tyler hosting. Fifth time, she said, and I couldn't believe it. I know she's been there for a while. I didn't realize it was five years. She's killing it. She does an amazing job covering those press conferences, which is just outstanding. She always does a great job doing that. Now, they started off pretty weird with, like, a queen number for Just Dance... 2017, cool, whatever, kind of glossed over that. They just kind of said, yeah, we're doing it. We know you don't give a shit, but we have to announce it. And we're like, cool beans, yep, keep going. But they got pretty much right into the goods with Ghost Recon Wildlands. They did like a CGI trailer that was really cool. But the main thing that I've been missing from these other press conferences Things like EA that was just like, this game's coming out in three years, this game's coming out eventually, there was no release dates, there was not really much gameplay, which I was shocked about, especially in terms of something like Mass Effect. So th something that just stood out overall for this press conference was imminent games, games that are coming out in the next 6, 12, 18 months at the most, but it was all imminent games from Ubisoft with trailers and demos for almost everything. They showed us games that were ready to be shown, not like these other companies that barely any demos were being shown, and the games just weren't ready to be shown at all. Ubisoft killed it this year with that, and a very long press conference too. If I was going to say anything, it was, just a, it was a bit long. But we started off strong with Ghost Recon Wildlands and that trailer, then we got a demo. Obviously, they let us know, you know, it's solo or up to four players co-op, so that was great. Got to see it felt like, you know, an open world, like a just cause, where it's really large and expansive, but kind of the mixture of gameplay was, if, what do you expect from a Ghost Recon, but like a Far Cry and a Battlefield, like it just mixed some great elements together, and I really enjoyed Ghost Recon Wildlands last year when they showed it off, and this year again, they did a really good job showing it, so very exciting, and they gave us an official release date, March 7th, 2017, so a game that's coming out about in, you know, nine months time. So we're like, oh, cool. You know, they showed us off looking good, not that long, you know. It's going to be before the next E3. So that's good to know, at least unless there's delays. But the game looks like a lot of fun. They showed South Park. Well, they did a really cool, like, uh, Snowdrop engine trailer. It was kind of like, looked like The Division or something. And it was just like, the coon comes up, Cartman. You know, very cool. And they had Trey Parker, Matt Stone come out and do their funny stuff, you know. South Park and, the, what is it, the Fractured Butt, but Hole, Butt Hole, Fractured But Hole, which comes out December 6th this year, looks great, like a good improvement from, you know, Stick of Truth, so they're doing well with these South Park games, again, it's, I'm probably not going to play it, I didn't play Stick of Truth, I love South Park, but, you know, not every game's for me, and this is what I love about this press conference, it's very diverse, but not too diverse, like, they floated beautifully from one game to the other, I thought they did a great job throughout it doing this, and they showed demos of great games, not everything's for me, but I'm sure the games that come out that are for me or aren't for me, they're gonna be great, they're good quality games that they showed, and I was very happy with what they showed, even if a game's not for me, I can recognize, I'm like, cool, that's how my game looks like fun, and I'm sure the people who want to play that will love it. They obviously came out, they're showing their support for the Division continuing on and moving forward, so they showed some Division expansion stuff, just a little trailer and kind of some release dates and windows of next month we get one, and then Survival expansion 2 later on this year, so it's just showing their support for the game within its first 12 months and that they're rewarding you for that sort of stuff. They moved on to some VR stuff, which is cool, you know, I like that all these companies are showing some VR support like Bethesda did yesterday, but also Ubisoft doing the Star Trek uh, one and also Eagle Flight. I'm not a VR guy. Maybe I'll 
be converted eventually, but at the moment, not that interested, but, you know, cool stuff, I'm glad they at least showed it and flowed it forward, worked well, kind of, in the middle of the show there. Now, a new IP from Ubisoft for Honor looks great, they did a cool, just CGI trailer, as they do with a lot of their games, just kind of showing some cinematics of maybe some story elements and characters you're going to see, then they announced, because last year was just that multiplayer, and I, I thought it was just going to be another, oh, here we go, next generation multiplayer style game. No, there is definitely a campaign and this looked really cool too. We got a look at what looks like it's going to be three campaigns because there's those three factions. You have the Samurais, the Vikings, and, oh, shit, I forget the third one. It's just generic white guys, I guess. I don't know. But it just looked like uh, just a mixture of a lot of things. Cool to see... For Honor in action and get its campaign and it looks like you're going to have three separate campaigns from what they talked about and we got a look at the demo for the Viking one. Interesting combat, looks quite fluid, but I was a bit worried because they had a live demo playing so they had the guy playing at, at, at the stage and I don't know, it looked like he was having some trouble. Maybe that's just how the game plays and he just wanted to show it off, but I don't know, it just seemed a bit, I don't know, it looked really cool, very excited looks just like an epic styled game, you got multiplayer, you got some single player, that's great, just in some ways the, the gameplay looked a bit, possibly like a hard learning curve, like there's just some things they got to iron out maybe, I don't know, but I'm sure we'll see very soon, it comes out, what was the date, I think it was February 14th, 2017, so only three weeks before Ghost Recon Wildlands are going to have a good start to next year, similar to I guess this year we had The Division and Far Cry Primal quite early on February, and then in March, so Ubisoft are doing well with these games, giving them their own window to really shine, I like that they're newer games, and they're giving it time where they're not around other games, you know, in the fall, they've got their big guns, you know, Assassin's Creed usually, but this year you Watch Dogs 2, so smart release windows I got from this conference as well. Then, of course, you can't have a Ubisoft press conference without Assassin's Creed, and then they played the Ezio theme, and I was like, god damn it, I'm honey dicked into this, but they just really showed some of the movie off, they just had a behind the scenes little, little feature and it was cool, showed us some stuff we hadn't seen, more cast images and things like that, C cool, you know, like it looks cool, not really that much to talk about over it, I might do a separate video breaking that down, but there wasn't really that much other than showing the cast off that we didn't see in the actual reveal last month, wasn't too much to it, you know, I'm, I, I'm happy with it, I'm glad they had to show some Assassin's Creed or something to but that was about it, you know, there wasn't any Empire reveal, but then again, I think the thing it confirmed about the next Assassin's Creed game, is it's not coming out in the next 12 months, it won't be early 2017, it's going to be at the earliest, you know, late 2017 is what I say, fall, like the usual release window, so it really is going to be a full two years between games, I'm happy with that, I think we got confirmation of that, from the fact that they're really focusing on games that are imminent, which I enjoyed, so I'm okay with the fact they didn't just tease it because we want to tease it. You know, they're like, we're not ready to show Empire, we're not going to show Empire. I can appreciate the patience. Ubisoft can be a little hasty with that stuff, so I'm happy they did that. Good job. That's a thumbs up for that. Then, of course, we had what I thought at the time was the main event, Watch Dogs 2, because I'm looking at my watch like, this is going for almost two hours, this is a long press conference, and they had a great demo where we got to see uh, Marcus Holloway in action, some real gritty shit. Oh, Watch Dogs 2 looks fucking awesome! You, most of you know how much I love Watch Dogs 1. This one just looks like the AC2 of Watch Dogs, you know, it's exactly what it needs to be. It felt and looked like Watch Dogs 1, but hugely improved, a really cool new character, you got to see some interactions with the DeadSec guys and some interesting DeadSec characters in there and amongst their side characters which look very cool and interesting with their own personalities. You got to see the parkour, some use of all these new hacking devices. It felt like a Watch Dogs infiltration but different because you got the different levels now with the extensive parkour that's in it but also the fact that when you're hacking you had to actually hack a crane which I was like brilliant you know you can actually get to the levels you want to go to, and you're in control of that, it's not like you hit the crane and it just moves you to its we decide, it looked like, you know, you're controlling when you're on the crane where you want to be moved to, and then you jumped on a rooftop on a skyscraper, you know, I always wondered how do you parkour really like an Assassin's Creed game and make it in a modern day, well that's how you do it, Watch Dogs 2 are doing it, 
brilliant stuff. I, I don't know what to say other than that. You know, you saw the character. He looked great. Looked like he had a bit of that, what I'd call, Assassin's Creed protagonist innocence that you saw, I guess, from guys like Ezio and Arno had that, I think, when they start their games. You know, you have that first kind of innocence and just they want to... They have a goal, but they're really feeling like the player is in that sense of, oh, this is going to be cool, and especially in the Ezio games, obviously, you know, not Unity, but Ezio really had that in AC2 specifically, and I felt that straight away from that first cutscene you had with Marcus, and that was, it was just a great, great demo, and then a nice little trailer just showing up San Francisco as well. Very happy with Watch Dogs 2 and how that's shaping up. That obviously comes out November 15th. This year, very exciting. The final thing they had at the demo was a new IP. I was like, oh, well, okay, they are going to show an IP. Here's the surprise, even though it's flowed great so far. Steep. Pretty much an open world extreme sports game. I mean, it looks beautiful, you know, but there was just four extreme sports they showed. They had, you know, parachuting, wingsuit, snowing, snowing, um, snowboarding, skiing. So they had those four main extreme sports they were showing off. I mean, it looked fun. It looked like a game that would be a good time for an hour. And then you've tried everything. Like, I don't see the longevity in Steep as a gamer. I just feel like I'd play it for an hour and it'd be, I'd have a great time for that hour. But then I'm like, well, what else is there to do? Is there depth to it? I don't know. It just seems like an arcade style game with the look of a triple A. I don't know. I'm not sure how it's going to go. I look forward to playing the beta. I'll check it out and see how I feel then. But I might play the beta and be like, well, I'm done. That was enough. I got a free play of this and that's it. That's all I needed. Uh, it's playable at E3 and it's going to be in beta soon. I'm not sure if it's closed or open yet. Uh, so it looks close to being done. It might be coming out this year. I don't think there was a release date for it. I didn't see it at least. But I mean, it looks interesting. It looks like a well-made game, not really for me, but if it's in a beta, that way I don't have to pay a bunch of money to at least try it out, I'm going to do that. So it could be cool. And that was pretty much E3 for Ubisoft, at least so far, the, their press conference. You know, it was the, so far the best press conference I've seen at E3 this year. You know, they just showed games that are coming out soon, as I've said, and demos. We saw games that were ready to be shown that are close to release that got me excited for the next 12 months of gaming. I don't need to... Like, sure, I love teasers, and I love being excited for two, three years down the line, which you know, Bethesda could have done with Elder Scrolls Six, Ubisoft could have done with Empire, but they didn't. They focused on what's now, and I love that, and they showed real gameplay. Brilliant stuff from Ubisoft. I'm stoked. I'm really happy with this. But let me know what you guys think of the press conference. Are you guys upset that we didn't get an Empire teaser? What games are you most looking forward to from Ubisoft coming soon? Mine's Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs 2 fucking looks brilliant. And For Honor as well looks really good. And so does Ghost Recon. Three brilliant games from that press conference that we took. Sure, we knew they were coming, but it doesn't make it any less great. They looked good. And they showed us more of it and more to get us excited, not to take away from any of the games. So... I'm, I'm excited for what Ubisoft has to offer in the next 12 months. Very excited. And there's plenty of games for everyone out there, I think, from Ubisoft as well. That's my E3 recap from Ubisoft. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'm not sure how many E3 videos I'll do. Might do a separate Assassin's Creed movie video or maybe Watch Dogs 2 video. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.